Hi everyone, it's Darlene. Welcome back for card number four in my video series, One Stamp, Four Ways. I'm using this stamp set called Cloudy Skies by Simon Says Stamp each week during the month of March. The card for today is probably not what you would expect. I put two clouds together to make a flower. So here is the set and I'm using this solid cloud right here. And what you wanna do is use an ink pad and a marker and the marker should be one shade darker than the ink pad. So I have tumbled glass with a salty ocean marker, scattered straw with a ripe persimmon marker and worn lipstick with a barn door marker. And the other thing you'll need is an aqua painter or you can use a paintbrush with some water. I'm gonna start by stamping my flowers. I have some Strathmore 90 pound watercolor paper and I'm gonna ink up my cloud with the worn lipstick first and then stamp it down on my cardstock. And you know, distress inks aren't really made to be stamping inks, so, and plus with the texture of the paper, you're not gonna get that great of an impression. So I'm gonna flip this over and stamp it again. And the ideal way to stamp this is to have them exactly meet in the middle, but um, that's usually not the case. It's better to have them overlap a little bit rather than leave a gap. It's just harder to fill the gap. So if they overlap, that's fine. And you're gonna just use an aqua painter to just kind of spread out the ink and even it out a little bit. Now I went ahead and stamped all of them because I wanted them to dry first before I headed into this next step. I'm using the fine point of my marker, this is a barn door marker, to kind of make curves and clouds around and inside the cloud. So I suggest that you do this really slowly, just kind of pause because you're trying to go in a circle and you're also trying to get smaller and smaller and then just sort of end on a curve. It doesn't matter where you start, you can start on any of the loops, just start where they come together on the inside and just work your way around. Next, I'm gonna add some base color for some dimension. So I'm just using the brush tip with that same marker to get some ink on my craft mat, and then I'll grab my aqua painter, and what I'm gonna do is pick up some ink and lay it down right on the outside edge of the line that I drew with the marker. And uh, I'm gonna blend it out, which is why I'm using an aqua painter. I'm gonna go probably to about the middle of the petal, uh, maybe two thirds of the way up, but just, just enough to blend it so that I don't see any harsh lines. So I'm gonna work my way all the way around until I hit the middle, make sure I get everything on the outside. So you're not gonna touch the inside of the fine line, just the outside of the fine line. And of course, I always have a tissue off to the side so that if I get too much color on my brush, I can wipe it off and start over. So whenever I pick up more color, I'm gonna lay it first right on the outside edge of that line and then work it out until it fades. You want to be careful not to use too much water. So you want a fairly dry brush because you want the colors to be pretty intense and the more water you use, the more muted the colors will be. You can actually do multiple layers of this. So let it dry, add some more darker color, let it dry. Um, but the next step that I'm gonna do is gonna make this even darker and it's gonna be much easier and faster. All right, so moving on to that step, you can let that dry a little bit. You, it can be a little damp, but you want it mostly dry. You're gonna take the brush tip again of the same marker and you're gonna add a few dots directly to the paper and you're gonna add them between each of the loops. So where the two circles kind of curve together, you're going to add a few dots in there and then you'll go up one side and up the other side just a little bit. So you're not gonna cover the whole thing because it'll look like a circle around the petal. So what you wanna do is you kinda add some dots right here, right between the two petals, and then you pull the color out just a little bit and a little bit up around the edge. So hopefully, it's kind of hard to explain, but I'm doing it while I'm saying it, so hopefully you kind of see what I'm doing where I'm going into each one of these curves where they meet and putting the color inside there. The reason why I'm using dots is because I'm trying to be really light-handed with the color. You don't want too much going on there. So then finally, I'm gonna take my aqua painter and I'm gonna just blend out the harsh lines. I'm not gonna add too much water. I'm just gonna dab it here and there just so that it doesn't look like I colored it with a marker. So I'm gonna go all the way around the flower doing that. After blending that out, I decided I wanted a little bit more dark inside the center. So I just put a few dots in there and then I blended it with my aqua painter. 
Now I wanted my edges to pop a little bit more, so I took my marker, again the same one, the brush tip, and I'm gonna color a little bit, not around every single petal, but just in different spots, just randomly. And I'm just gonna draw a line, and you don't have to worry too much about getting it exactly on the line, because I'm gonna be cutting these out, so I can always cut off the part that I go over the line. And then I'll again take my aqua painter and just swish the color. That's all I'm gonna do is mostly just a single line, just so that it doesn't look like I actually drew these lines on the flower. So I want it to look like the flower's kind of bending down and creating a shadow. It may seem like there's a lot of steps to create this flower, but honestly, I think it's just a back and forth a few times with the same step. And it's all very methodical. So I'm doing the exact same steps on each one of these flowers. I'm showing you here on the yellow. I just, uh, stamped it in scattered straw. Then I used ripe persimmon. I did the fine tip and I drew my circles around and around toward the middle. And now I'm taking my aqua painter. And this one's a little bit harder to blend because rather than having a dark and light shade of the same color, I have two different colors. So I have yellow and orange. But I really wanted the yellow to be really bright and vibrant and that's why I added the orange. But you can see here, I'm going through the same exact steps and I'm creating these shadow areas by coloring right outside that fine tip and then blending it out toward the edge of the next petal. And then just like with the other one, I'm gonna create a little bit more of a darker shadow between the two layers of petals by taking my marker direct to paper with the brush tip and dotting those areas where the curves meet and then going up the edge just a little bit. And I really like the way this ripe persimmon looks with the scattered straw. And then going back with my aqua painter and just pulling that color out, I just wanna go in there and make sure it doesn't look like I colored with a marker and that's all I'm doing. And then finally, just adding that extra pop on the edges where I'm drawing uh, right around the edges in little areas randomly, not all the way around. And that way it makes it look a little bit more realistic. And then I'll just kind of swipe each one of these curves with my aqua painter. I stamped my blue flower with tumbled glass and I'm gonna be using the Salty Ocean marker to add the highlights. I went ahead and kept this blue flower in the video. If you don't wanna watch, you can skip about a minute and 15 seconds or so, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn up the music and you can watch this come to life. All right, now it's time to create the other elements of the card. I have a piece of Nina Solar White card stock that's cut to two and a half by five and a half. I'm inking up this My Favorite Things striped stamp. Uh, it's a background stamp, and I'm angling it because it's not a diagonal stamp. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna stamp it with some Versamark ink, and then I'll sprinkle it with some clear embossing powder. I wanted to add something behind these flowers, but I didn't want to distract from them at all. So this clear embossing on white paper was just the perfect thing I needed. I decided to add some contrast with my sentiment. So I'm using the Altenu Label Love Set. It's a white on black. So I'm gonna stamp it with my Hero Hues black ink, and then I'm gonna cut it out. This gives a really nice crisp impression. I'm really impressed with this particular brand of ink. So I'm gonna cut that out, and then I'm also gonna cut a strip of black cardstock. It's about an eighth of an inch wide. My card base is Nina Solar White. It's what I always use for my card base. I have this Doodlebug washi tape in gray Swiss dot, 
And uh, washi tape is a great way to add an accent to your card without going through a lot of trouble with inking and stamping and, and all sorts of things like that. So I'm just going to pull it off the roll and put it right along the left edge. And then I just cut off the end and since I can't really wrap it around because it's my card base. I'll take this strip of black, I'm gonna put two-way glue pen behind it and place it right there next to my uh, washi tape. And then I took my uh, striped panel, put some ATG tape runner on it, and I didn't want too much of the black to show, so I kind of overlapped them just a little bit so that maybe a sixteenth of an inch was showing. So I just wanted a little black accent, and this is gonna balance my sentiment that's gonna be on the right portion of the card. Now it's time to arrange my flowers on the panel and I'm gonna kind of overlap them just a little bit so that they fit and I put my blue in the center. And once I get them where I want them, I really didn't wanna pick them up since they overlap each other, I might ruin it the way I set it up when I pick it up. So I'm taking my masking tape that comes in rolls and I'm gonna cut off a strip and I'm gonna lay it directly on top of those flowers. And I'm gonna press it firmly in place and every single one of those flowers is gonna to stick to it. And that way I can flip it over and in fact, they all touch each other in wide enough areas that I can use one piece of Scotch foam tape. So I'm gonna put the tape across all five of the flowers and then I'll take my release backing off and just put it back where I had it or as close to it as I could remember. I tend to deliberate quite a bit on where I wanna place things. So using this masking tape has re been really helpful for me. So I'm just gonna make sure I place it such that my sentiment has enough space on the right-hand side. And this Scotch foam tape is very sticky, so the, um, the masking tape will come right off and the flowers will stay on the card base. You can see I pull it off right here, and it comes right off. For the sentiment, I just put some tape runner on the back. I'm just gonna have that lay flat against the card and then I tucked it a little bit behind that bottom red flower. So you can see the black of my sentiment balances out that black stripe that's going in the opposite direction, so up and down on the left-hand side. And that is the card for today. So quite a unique way to use those cloud stamps and fun because you can be creative in how your flowers look. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.